Hello friends and enthusiasts. I was going to make this video about a new pair of Horn X2s we put together. Uh, unusual request for the wood. It was canary wood. Came out really nice. I will show you how that came out here later on. But what I'd like to discuss is substituting better parts such as coils or sisters, capacitors, and helping and wishing and whatever may be that is going to improve your speaker. Um, unfortunately, um, there's not much of a difference. Now, you can go ahead and, let's say, for example, take an inexpensive coil here, probably 10 bucks, I don't know, somewhere around that, and you can substitute a really nice foil coil for that. It's an inductor. It's just allowing current to pass and uh, voltage and rolling it off at a certain point. Does it have an audio effect? I guess. I mean, not enough to really hear. You, you can't even measure it. If you measure these two things here, you know, the same uh, inductance and same resistance, you won't see a liquid measurement difference, although golden ears would hope to dissuade you of that. Um, same thing goes with the capacitor here. This is an inexpensive Dayton Audio cap um, that you can use in a crossover. It's a decent cap. It's probably, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that versus a, a really nice clarity cap from, they make them in Wales now. They're made by not the, a whale, but in the country of Wales or state of Wales or part of the UK of Wales. Um, it's made by a capacitor company that makes industrial capacitors, and which is perfectly fine because they know what they're doing. So these are pretty decent caps. This one's probably about, I don't know, 30 bucks. Um, does it make a difference? Maybe. I don't know. On any given day, if you put it in and step away and come back and someone mixes the speakers around, I'm not sure you'd even hear a difference. Maybe nothing. Most likely nothing. Um, Audio Science Review has done a double blind test where they say there is no difference, you cannot tell. So I don't know. Um, but let's look at the reality of what needs to be changed to make a significant, a profound difference in the performance of your speaker. Let's take a look at that for a moment. Let's look at an average, well, this is actually an above average tweeter. Um, this is a ring radiator tweeter. They're not cheap, they're decent. Um, this is what comes in some of the higher end speakers. It's uh, mostly plastic, but it's okay. Uh, let's see who makes this. This is made by Peerless. Peerless is a well-known company. They've been around for, I don't know, maybe 50 years. This one happens to be made in China. Um, but uh, it's a decent tweeter, nice magnet. Um, so this will come in many, many speakers. Could be in yours. I don't know, maybe. But what does make a huge difference is a compression driver made in Spain by Bema, who's been around since the, well, last century. That sounds like so long ago, but not necessarily. This thing's a monster. It's got a constant directivity horn, which uh, puts the music where you need it, not on the walls, not on the ceiling, not on the floor, but it puts it in your ears. We use this in all our products, except for the Little Hero, which is the, uses the same compression driver, smaller horn, of course. And we have a woofer slash mid-range slash full range driver by hi -Bi. It is a Chinese company. It's inexpensive. It's a decent model. Um, we didn't use this one because it sounded kind of weird in the mid-range, kind of honky. And But if you substitute, say, for that, and you grab a Mark Audio CHR120, which is a beautiful magnesium aluminum cone driver, really nicely made. Uh, Mark Fenland is designs these in England. They are made in Taiwan. They were originally made in China. But to make to make a price point, that's where it had to be made. It's a fabulous driver. We use it in quite a few of our products. People use them at home or DIY builds with our Horn X2, which sits on top of it and provides all the upper mid-range and treble. So with that said, you're probably going, what is the point? What is this guy trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is the beef in the burger is in the middle. It's the, the beef, not the bun, not the pickles, not the sauce, not the lettuce or the onions even. They are accoutrements. They add to the flavor. 
but you're buying a hamburger. So if you get a inexpensive $38 tweeter in your speaker, putting another $38 capacitor with it isn't going to make it a $74 tweeter. It's going to be a $38 tweeter with a $38 capacitor, and it's going to sound like it. So with that said, let's go ahead and explore what options you do have, what your peers and sometimes friends who talk amongst each other have done to improve their systems. I will show you what they have done. This is a chart of the Horn X2 and how it functions when it uh, decapitates your speaker. Essentially, setting this up top of any speaker, two-way, three-way, single driver, doesn't matter. It takes over the high frequencies in the blue here from the speaker you're setting on top of. So most people get disillusioned regarding their speakers. They're okay with the bass. I like the bass. They like the lower mid-range. They like the presence of the mid-range, This, you know, the, that part they're really in love with. But they find out that it's not detailed enough and it doesn't give them the presence that they're looking for or, or the dynamics. Well, the best way to fix that is to replace the upper drivers from the, up, the mid-range on up. But what are you going to do? You're going to cut a hole in your speaker and stuff a new tweeter in there or something. So no, you're not going to do that. So you're going to bring it on out and you're going to set it down and set a Horn X2 on top of it, plug it into the back, plug an amplifier into the Horn X2 and you're completely ready to go. There's no tweaking. There's no messing around. There's no disconnecting anything. And you're probably saying, well, how is that possible? How can it do that? I don't believe that's going to work. Well, it's going to work because there's a two-way crossover built into the Horn X2. So when you set it on the speaker and you connect your amplifier, it sends a signal, just the low pass signal, just the low frequencies go to the cabinet below the Horn X2. All the high frequencies and upper mids go to the Horn X2. Now you might say, well, what if it doesn't match? It's, maybe it's just going to sound soft or too loud. Well, there's an easy way to fix that because there's a resistor sitting on top that tunes the horn next to to match your cabinet and work where you've got there. It'll match all the way up to 108 decibel super sensitive speaker, which I don't think there are any, all the way down to uh, middle of the range, 83 or even below that. So you can make the horn loud, you can make it soft. You can also move its crossover range here, up or down within reason, and anywhere up. If you want just as a super tweeter, you can move it up to here. If you want it as low as it'll go, which is right around here. And so your woofer plays these instruments here from the sub bass, if you can get down that far, all the way up into the middle of the mid-range from, from there on out. The uh, Horn X2 takes over. It's simple. It's inexpensive. You can move it from speaker to speaker. If you've got four pair of speakers you're dissatisfied with, you've got four new speakers that you're satisfied with. So give us a call. We can consult with you. And it'll work on nearly anything, as you can see by the photos. And we get plenty more texts and emails uh, with success. No one's ever returned a pair. So uh, let me know, and we can work it out with you. Uh, thanks for listening.